Good day, everyone. Welcome to Macro Enterprises, where we discuss, analyze, and make sure that we get results when it comes to the different engineering aspects. Today's lesson is going to focus on clearances. So I've had this question time and again, what are clearances? Uh, people ask, what is a clearance? What are the different type of clearance that we have in a construction project? And then how do we measure the effectiveness of a clearance of all clearance release? And then also, what are the different types of clearances or how do we release the different types of clearances that we already mentioned? Um, today, we are going to be driving us through the different aspects. What is a clearance and the different types? How do we measure the effectiveness of clearance? And then also, how do we release the different clearances in the different um, type of clearances which we are requesting. The first question on our list, what is a clearance or what is clearance? So clearance is um, giving way for another contractor to proceed with their own activity or giving way for another service to be carried out in a particular location. So if we have um, installation works that are being carried out on site or probably we have a high-rise building which we have as a project. So in this case, we have Probably we have different contractors that are carrying out their different activities in that project. We might be talking of um, interior design contractor, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and block work contractor. So we have all the different contractors that are working on site. As such, this is where now the clearances comes in. Supposing that we've carried out our uh, planning and then we've uh, planned that this project should be completed at this particular time looking at the scope, and then also looking at the different resources that should be put in place. As such now, the clearances now will come in so that we don't have different contractors that are carrying out their work without making sure that other activities that should be installed in that area are completed. So we have to follow the clearance procedures to ensure that we have a smooth operation or a smooth um, construction activities that are being carried out in the project. This is very important. So we'll dive now to the next question in our list, which is what are the different clearances that we have? So we have um, different type of clearances that we should request for or from another contractor. Supposing that we have, um, like I did mention, we have mechanical, electrical, plumbing, architecture, civil contractors that are working on site. So we need to ensure that we get clearances for the different activities that we are carrying out on site. So, but for the purpose of this uh, lesson, we'll be focusing on three major clearances that should be requested on site, which is the wall clearance, ceiling clearance, and floor clearance. So when we talk of wall clearance, we might be talking of uh, the final finishes on the wall, or probably plastering, or paintings, and all that. So we need to request clearances for the different activities that we are carrying out on that wall prior to proceeding with the either painting, plastering, or whatever, or tiling. So we ensure that all the different installation works or the different services that should be installed in that particular wall, wall is all, they are all completed. So that we request and then we get signatory from the different departments prior to proceeding with either the plastering, the painting, or whatever that we want to do on the wall, which is very important. And then also we have, um, for the, in the case of the floor, for the floor, we might be talking of marble installation, tiling, or screed. So while we proceed with the different um, activity, we need to ensure that we've got clearance from the different um, contractor, stating that all their different activities have been carried out in that particular location so that we can also proceed with either the screed, tiling, or marble installation in that particular area, which is very important. And then also, we talk, if we're talking of the ceiling clearances, in this case now, we will have to ensure that all the different services that should be installed above the four ceiling are all completed. Looking at the different services, like we might be talking of the electrical, mechanical services, or the plumbing services. So all the different activities have been carried out in that different areas. So we get signatory from the concerned persons before we proceed with the ceiling closure, which is very important. So the next question on our list is, um, how do we measure the effectiveness of clearance release? Um, I would like us to look at it this way. If we have a business that is operating, 
to measure the effectiveness of this business, we need to have them over for that particular service or for that particular good that we are offering to the market or putting out in the market. So when we have them over, it measures the effectiveness or either increase it or reduce it as far as the business is concerned. The same way now I'd like us to look at project management in this way, that when we have clearance release that is frequently coming, that is we, we have frequently release of clearance, it also increases the effectiveness of that project. In that case, we have all the different contractors will be working. Nobody will sit idle in that case, whereby if we have um, maybe interior design contractors that need to be working on site and we've not provided clearances for either floor finishes, ceiling closure or um, wall closure. In that case, the uh, interior design contractor will be sitting down and then also will hump or will um, make the project not to finish at the particular time which is supposed to be completed. So I would like us to look at clearances as a milestone whereby when we get to releasing of clearance, which you look at is so critical enough so that we have them keep releasing from the different contractors so that we it also enable the timely completion of the project, which is very important. The next question that we have on our list is, how do we release clearances for, we mentioned already for wall, floor and ceiling. So we'll start for wall. For the wall release of clearances, after we've uh, requested the clearance, from um, from the architectural side, which is coming now to the MEP side. So in this case now, we're calling it MEP clearances or the mechanical, electrical and plumbing clearances, requesting that we need to close this particular area to ensure that all the different activities that need to be installed in that area, they are all completed for wall, for floor and for ceiling. So we start with wall. So for wall clearances, supposing that we have all the activities that are being carried out on site, we'll be talking on mechanical, electrical, and plumbing services. So in that particular wall, we have all the different services that are being installed, and then they follow the normal procedure of racing inspection or racing inspection request to the consultant. So all the different inspection requests have been approved in that area or in that particular wall that we want to release. So we will have to make sure that we get, again, the interior design drawing for that particular wall. So we get the wall elevation to ensure that all the different uh, um, accessories or all the different um, wiring devices, all the different fixtures that should be installed in that particular wall are as per the latest approved interior design drawing. In this case now, so that we don't have any discrepancy when it comes to the installation works. Perhaps we have interior design engineer that will be coming on us, uh, coming to site to check this particular wall. So he, he finds out that we have maybe uh, more switches or more sockets or more data outlet as compared to our MEP design drawings that have been approved. In this case, we'll call them shop drawings. So we start having the discrepancy. So in this case now, we have to make sure that we go back to our interior design drawing to ensure that we have, we don't have any discrepancy between the two drawings. In this case, we would now check to ensure that all the different accessories or all the different fittings have been installed. So prior to giving clearance to proceed with the wall closure, we have to prepare a front page and then highlight that particular area, submit now to the concerned parties. In this case, we'll be talking up to the, to the MEP contractor, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. They have to ensure that all the different activities have been carried out for that in that particular wall so that we can proceed with the wall closure. For the floor as well, we have to go through a floor finishes layout. So we check all the different um, all the different things that are need to be installed in that particular floor. So we ensure that they are all installed, make sure that all the different inspection requests are approved. And then also we check the, the interior design or the ID, like I did mention. So to ensure that we have all these different points and we don't have any discrepancy between the ID drawings or the interior design drawing and the MEP layouts or the shop drawings. With that now, we'll be able now to release clearance to the concerned party or to the interior design to proceed with the floor finishes. The next now we'll be talking of ceiling clearances. So for clear ceiling clearances, we'll be talking of, um, we have all the different installation works that are mechanical on site. 
we might be talking of um, um, mechanical systems such as firefighting. We have uh, FCUs that have been installed as well. We have chill water pipes. We have ductings. So all these installation works have been carried out. And then we have also for uh, electrical systems, ICTs, BMS, fire alarm system, lighting, small power. So all these different services have been installed in that particular area above the four ceiling. So we ensure that we have the first fix and second fix have been installed. So we have different testing that be carried out. We might be talking of um, firefighting. We have all the installation of the firefighting pipes have been installed. We have the pins have been done. We have pressure tests that have been conducted as well. It's all, they are all approved. We move now to our chill water pipes. All the pipes have been installed. We have um, pressure tests that have been installed. We move now to the insulation have been installed as well. Everything is okay. And then we move now to our ductings. All the ducts have been installed. We perform our light tests and then we do our insulation for the ducts. So all these different aspects have been done. And then for electrical as well, we have all our first fix, second fix have been done as well. And then we've conducted our dead test, which is continuity and mega test have been conducted as well. So when we have all these different inspection requests that have been approved, so in a case of now releasing the clearance now for ceiling closure, we have to ensure that we don't have any clashes which have been installed on site. Perhaps we have um, some cases, if we have mechanical contractors that are coming in to carry out their installation works, they perhaps notice that we have installed or mechanical have installed, no, sorry, electrical have installed the uh, isolator or brought, um, FCU panels for the FCU. So if they install the FCU panels, in that case now we have docks that needs to run along that line. They cannot install because we have this FCU uh, control panel that was installed. So they have to remove and then they install their, their docks. Supposing that we have the electrical have installed already their FC control panels and it's approved. The race inspection and it's approved. Mechanical now installed their docks, the race inspection and it's approved. In that case now, if we don't go back to site to check if the work is of quality prior to releasing the clearance, we we'll have to release the clearance, not knowing that we have this FCU control panel have been removed on site by the mechanical team, which will hamper the quality as well of the project. So we have to ensure that we check the ID drawings to ensure that all the different points are already installed on site. All the different final fix that we have that needs to be installed at both four ceilings are all installed. So we ensure that all these different aspects have been taken into consideration prior to releasing the clearance for, for ceiling. And then also we have another inspection request, which is known as MEP final inspection. So we raise this MEP final inspection, check all the different inspection requests, ensure that they are all approved. And then also we go to site to check that we don't have any, any clashes with any other services when it comes to firefighting pipes and the electrical services, cable tree, cable trunkings, they are not clashing with ductings and all that. So we make sure that everything is intact. Then we can now release the clearance or sign up for the release of the clearances, which is very important. What I would really like to tell the viewers or everyone that is watching me right now is that while you're carrying out your project, you should make sure that you look at clearances as a priority or something which we need to look upon when it comes to our project completion. So we focus on the clearances to make sure that we have continuous turnover when it comes to release of clearances. We push, we push to make sure that we have all the different activities have been installed in a particular location. Then we raise clearance so that everyone in the project will be working. Nobody will sit down because we don't have open work. So we ensure that we have continuous release of clearance. So I'm going to drive us now to how to prepare the clearances to a front page. So in this case, I have, um, we'll have um, the client name will be written here. Which in this case, is number one real estate company. So on the right side now, we have um, the main contractor company, which in this case is Makoka Enterprises. The project name, Family Villa. We have the contractor name will be here. We have the, con the consultant name. And then we have our clearance number, which will be written here. In this case, we have MEP C, which is clearance 003 or 001. For example, we start with 001. So we now move here. We have different activities that need to be carried out. If you look here, we have backfilling, compactment, or uh, compaction. We have 
four ceiling or uh, final for final closure. We have waterproofing, we have floor tiling and all that. So we have different activities that need to be carried out. In this case now, if you want to release a clearance for a particular location, we just put a tick on that location. So we move here now, we come now to the item description. In this case, we have clearance to proceed plastering in ground floor dining, in ground floor dining as per highlighted in the drawing. So we move now to location, which is ground floor. We put a date here. We have subcontractor name that needs to be, it be written here. We have the subcontractor name from the, the QQC engineer will write the name here. We have the site engineer will put a name here. Then we have the main contractor will be right below. And then we have the MEP manager will write his name and sign. QQC engineer as well from the main contractor will write his name and sign. So we have here main contractor or uh, main contractor QQC comment. So for mechanical and electrical, he had to mention if it is okay to proceed or not. Then we have consultant remarks. In this case, now we have different disciplines for a consultant. We have mechanical, plumbing, and electrical. So the status, the description, and the signature, and then you put the date. So in this case, now we'll be able to list the clearance for, for the plastering of the wall. So I'll take us now so that we'll be able to see the design. So supposing we, that we have our drawing as such, so we'll be able to check now where exactly do we want to release the clearance. If you can see, this is the area we want to release the clearance, which is the dining area. So we'll have to crop this area, print out, attach to the front page so that we can request the clearance. So we crop it and then we print it out. So I will print. Okay, this is the front page. And then I'll move now to, okay, this is a page that we have now already, which has been signed by all the different parties, as you can see. It's okay, it's okay for mechanical and electrical. So we can now give to the consultant to get their own final remark. So we have our drawing, which is down here. In this case, this is the floor clearance that we are releasing. So this is floor tiling. So we highlight our search and then we attach alongside, which we have, this is, uh, in this case, we prepare final four ceiling clearance. And then we have, uh, we have this other clearance, which is for tile, which is what we are looking at right now. It is already printed out. So now we get our, drawing which is highlighted as well to staple it we now take to the consultant as it is right like this we now take to the consultant so that they can also sign get their signature put here put the status of it and then we can release the clearance for the closure or for the different closure in the different areas which we are talking of either the floor, the wall, or the ceiling closure, which is very important. Till then, you're watching Macro Enterprises.